at the London Aquarium and I'm with my friend and we're busy going around the aquarium and looking at all the beautiful uh, fishes, anemones and various things. So I thought I'd give you a quick sneaky peek. Here we go. So this is London Aquarium that's absolutely beautiful. I just want to show you these beautiful colours. Mm. such as the sharks breathing through gills. Now you can quite clearly see their gills located on the sides of their body. And in fact, 95% of shark species actually have to continuously swim around in the oceans in order to breathe. So in order to stay alive, sharks need to keep on swimming for about 95% of the species. Uh, and I can tell you now that uh, Bengal, our great big sand tiger shark here on the left hand side, He's very sleepy right now. He is actually fast asleep, but he is still swimming in order to stay alive. So he's swimming at just the right speed, just enough for oxygen to be extracted from his gills. Uh, but we also have another species of shark in the tank that can stay still. Uh, and this is the nurse shark. So you will see a lot of nurse sharks right at the bottom uh, of the tank. I hope maybe there's one over there lying in the sand demonstrating that. Uh, if not, we've got five of them swimming around. But the nurse sharks can stay still. They can actively pump water over their gills uh, in order to extract oxygen in this way. So there's the difference between our sand tigers, these great big ones in the middle, uh, and the nurse shark, which like to spend time at the bottom of the tank. Now, just like all fish as well, uh, the sharks, the rays, the elasmobranchs, they do have scales on their skin, just like those little goldfish. Uh, but their scales are a lot like tiny teeth. Uh, these are called dermal denticles. They're arranged in multiple layers uh, facing one direction. Now, I appreciate that petting a shark, that opportunity doesn't come around that often, but they do feel very, very rough to touch. Okay, almost like sandpaper. And I do actually have a bit of shark skin. You're more than welcome to have a feel of. I'll leave it up on the chest for you to have a little look at uh, and have a little feel. So it does feel a lot like sandpaper because of these tiny teeth. Uh, but it makes the sharks really good at swimming. It makes them very streamlined in the water. Uh, water literally bounces right off their skin, uh, making them very, very energy efficient. The other thing that makes them very energy efficient at swimming is actually what's inside of them. Now, the shark skeleton is not made up of bone. It's made up of cartilage instead. If you're wondering what cartilage feels like, give the tip of your nose a wiggle or your earlobes a squeeze. That's where cartilage is found. It's a lot lighter than bone. Uh, so sharks don't have to carry around with them this great big heavy bony skeleton. It's light, it's made out of cartilage. And it's also very flexible as well, enabling the sharks and the rays to twist and turn in the water. Uh, but it makes them very mysterious animals as well because cartilage breaks down unlike bone. So there's absolutely no fossil records of sharks or rays out there. A uh, lot of what we know about the sharks and the rays it comes down to their fossilized teeth instead. Uh, now, I'll point the new in the direction of our great big sand tiger sharks again, because they are bearing a very, very cheesy grin at us. Their mouth is full of teeth, and they are arranged in multiple rows. Now, the sand tiger sharks, uh, they can go through about 30,000 teeth in a lifetime. They're constantly being lost at a very, very quick rate. So if you're patient enough, you may actually be able to spot some sand tiger shark teeth uh, right at the bottom of the tank. Now, when one of them is lost, the row behind it will immediately push forward in a bit like a conveyor belt and replace and replenish that missing tooth. And now, their teeth are very sharp, very small and sharp, perfect for snapping up fish.
fish around them, okay, when they're hunting. Uh, but the nurse sharks, okay, making your eyes go back down towards the bottom of the tank. Uh, we refined our nurse sharks, their teeth are more like owls, they're more like molars, in fact, and they're perfect for crushing up crustaceans that they'll find right at the bottom of, of the sea bed. So the size and shape of the shark teeth does uh, very much depend on the species. But when it comes down to the shark senses, uh, I do believe that the best sense a shark has does come down to their sense of smell. They can pick up a single drop of blood in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Now, not only can they do this, they can home in on it. They can locate it in a matter of seconds. And they use this with their very, very good uh, sensory glands in their nostrils. Uh, and then it's based on the timing, it hits each nostril. So when a drop of blood is entered into the water, uh, um, depending on the timing it hits each nostril, that uh, enables the shark to know which direction it's coming from. So just like we can do with our sound, with our hearing, uh, we know whereabouts the sound is coming from based on the timing it hits our ears. Um, but the sharks, they have another sense to us. They have an extra sense to us. We have five senses. The sharks have another one, a sixth sense. Uh, this is called electroreception. Now what this means is that the sharks are actually able to pick up electrical impulses around them. Uh, so you may be thinking, okay, I've got my phone, I've got my camera out. Uh, does that mean that the sharks can pick up that electrical impulse that they've given out? Well, maybe, but what the sharks are really interested, as we're standing around the tank, uh, is what we are, um, are sounding like from inside. We all have a heartbeat standing around this tank. Well, let's hope we do. I'd be a little bit worried if we didn't. Uh, well, the sharks are able to home in on our heartbeats because our pacemakers are giving out an electrical impulse. Uh, so if we're nice and calm standing around this tank, uh, we'll probably sound a lot like this to the sharks. However, if we were, let's say, a frightened school of fish swimming around in the water with the sharks, we'd probably sound more like this. So they're very, very clever. They're able to home in on what's around them and know what's around them with this amazing sixth sense, this electroreception. Uh, if you look underneath the sharks and the rays, because they have that as well, you would be able to see some black pores, and on the way you look, like another set of eyes underneath their body. Uh, these are not another set of eyes, these are their electroreceptors, and this is how they have that amazing sixth sense. Now, contrary to popular beliefs, the shark eyesight is actually relatively good as well, which is why you guys are doing a good job at keeping your flashes switched off. Uh, they don't have eyelids, so they can't blink. Um, but they all have a bed going at the back of their eye, which allows them to see very well in the dark. Uh, so their, their vision is more like a cat's to ours, it's better than ours. Now, I'll, I'll point out a few more characters we have swimming around the tank here in London. I've already mentioned Zippy and Bungle are great big sand tiger sharks, and Bungle is here on the left, and Zippy is here on the right. Now, they are the biggest sharks we have here in the aquarium, the sand tiger sharks, also known as ragged two sharks. Uh, they've got the biggest shark in the world, though. Can anybody tell me the biggest shark in the world? Whale shark, well done, sir. Yeah, it's the whale shark. Uh, extra points goes towards the person that can tell me the biggest shark that ever existed on the planet. <laughs> well, they stuffed you with that one. There's a film coming out about it. And, uh, and, uh, you mean something? It's an ancient shark, so it's, it doesn't exist today. The biggest shark that ever existed. Uh, it's called the Megalodon shark. So it's an ancient shark that uh, people don't think uh, exists anymore, although there are a few that think it's down there in the depths. I certainly don't. Um, but the whale shark, to give you some perspective, the whale shark can go to about 30 meters, uh, two times the size of these great big Easter Island pillars we have in the tank. The Megalodon shark, 20 meters, three times the size of these great big pillars we have in the tank. And just to give you guys a little bit more of an appreciation as to how big the Megalodon is, I have one of its teeth in my hands. Uh, so this is a replica of fossilized tooth that was found off the coast of USA. Uh, and if you guys want to have a little feel of it, I'll leave it up on the chest for you guys to come and check out. And uh, now, I've mentioned our nurse sharks as well uh, in the tank. So we've got five of them in there. We've got Ashley Bell, Dean Carroll, uh, and El Dorado. Now I'll tell you a little fun story about Dean, our favourite nurse shark. I shouldn't really have favourites, but I do. Um, Dean, our nurse shark, swimming around, I'll point him out if he comes closer to the uh, to the glass. 
He arrived in the aquarium approximately 16 years ago in a wheelie bin full of water. Okay, the people that bought him in, his owners, uh, said, look, can you please help us out? Our catfish has got far too big for our tank at home and it's actually burst out the tank onto our living room floor. And uh, this is Dean on the left hand side here coming round. So say hello to Dean. Okay, now we said, yes, of course we can look after your catfish. Uh, but you do realize he is not a catfish at all. He is a juvenile nurse shark. Uh, so that is Dean. I just pointed him out swimming around our tank. He's one of the more active nurse sharks, actually. Uh, probably because he's uh, thought to be a catfish and not a nurse shark. But he is definitely a nurse shark and pretty much fully grown right now. Now, the other sharks we have in there, and we've got a little black tip reef shark swimming around. They're the smallest species we have here in the aquarium. And uh, they're all part of the breeding program we have for sea life. So we're always on the lookout for pregnant females swimming around to populate around the country. Uh, there's a beautiful one that just went past now. And just up the top here on the left, these are our little black tips. Very distinguishable by having black tips on their bits. Now, bigger than the black tip reef sharks are the grey reef shark, and that's her right in the back here. She's just swimming past the, uh, she's right in the back, she's just swam past this middle pier, uh, sort of on the left hand side, so she should pop her body out um, in a little bit. But that will be our grey reef shark swimming around. Uh, here she is just on the left here, swimming towards us. Okay, uh, now uh, we also have a very odd looking creature in our tank. You may be wondering, what on earth is she? Uh, is she a shark? Is she a ray? Well, you are probably looking at Betty, our bone mouth guitar fish. Perfect timing from her. She's right in the middle uh, with those big dorsal fins that she's got on. Spotty ray slash shark. Well, I can tell you, she is a bone mouth guitar fish. She's absolutely beautiful. Uh, is she a shark? Is she a ray? Technically, she is a ray, uh, but she is halfway between the shark and the ray. I mentioned earlier in my talk that the rays evolved from the sharks about 230 million years ago. Well, Betsy, our lovely bone mouth guitar fish, uh, is the midway point between that evolutionary process and she's absolutely beautiful in time. Uh, now, we have a couple of these stingrays as well in there. Uh, we have our southern stingray, the baronet. She's a big, big grey one uh, with a very, very long tail uh, in there. And we also have a mangrove stingray as well called Disco. Uh, so she's the black one, the darker looking one with a shorter tail. So look out for those two. Again, part of the alert from the family. So they have all of those same captures that conscious as well. Um, our sharks as well. Treat people. <laughs> Now, I want to clear up some misconceptions we may have about sharks. Okay? Now, I love the sharks. They're my favourite animal. I like to think that all sharks are human friendly. You may call me absolutely bonkers, uh, absolutely mad, but certainly the ones we have here at London are human friendly. You can go swimming with them, okay? You can go sit swimming with Zippy and Bungle, and you will not be eaten. The sharks here are fed three times a week off Trevally. Now Trevally is swimming in the tank with the sharks. So a question I get asked here all the time is why don't the sharks eat the fish in the tank? Uh, well, the reason for this is they are fed three times a week. They've got comfortable stomachs. They're not overfed, but they don't feel the need to chase around my fish because it's not worth it. They don't want to waste their energy. I like to iterate to people that sharks are not mindless killing machines. They don't kill for the fun of it, um, so they're not uh, as dangerous as you might think. However, I do appreciate that there are four sharks in the world that have given them a very bad name, a very bad reputation. Uh, can anybody name me any one of these four sharks I'm referring to? A killer shark? What does that look like? Never heard of a killer shark before. Do you mean the great white shark? Great white shark, the killer shark from Jaws. Okay, the great white shark is definitely up there in the top four most dangerous sharks known to man. Can anybody name me any others? The bull shark, definitely, yeah, that's up there in the top four as well. Uh, well done for that. Any others? There's two more I'm, th I'm thinking of. The tiger shark, well done, yeah, the tiger shark is also up there. Now, these three sharks that have been mentioned, the tiger shark, bull shark, and great white shark, uh, they will only attack a human if they think we are something else in the water or they don't know what we are. Fortunately, they don't have hands, so they're going to check us out with their mouths out um, for us. But I hate to break it to you guys, we are not tasty to sharks. And there is a reason for this, and that reason being is that we have red blood. We have iron in our blood. Ugh, it makes 
as but not very tasty to sharks. It makes us not on the menu uh, of their of their dinner. Okay, but the most dangerous shark known to man uh, is none of these sharks. It's called the oceanic white tip shark. It's a bit of a mouthful, uh, but the reason why the oceanic white tip is the most dangerous is because it's a pelagic shark. It spends uh, the majority of its life out there in the open water, out in the pelagic ocean, where food is very, very sparse. So if we, if we were out in the desert and food came around, we're not going to pass up the opportunity. So that's why the oceanic white tip shark is renowned as the most dangerous. But if you guys were to actually have a guess as to how many humans are killed by sharks a year, what would you guess? Any numbers? Three. Three. Any advances on three? Nine. Okay. Ten. Fifteen. Uh, well, guys, you, yeah, the, the first answers are pretty much spot on. It's in single figures. It's between one and nine sharks a year. Okay, it's never reached over single figures. Uh, last year, it was four humans were killed by sharks. Uh, but Chairs killed more humans last year, so look out for them at home, they're out to get you. Um, you're more likely to get killed by your toaster at home, so look out for those crafty little things. Uh, and you're, if you're still scared of being eaten by a shark, you're more likely to win the lottery, okay? So keep buying your lottery tickets, uh, if not, um, or not. Uh, but if I were to flip this question around and ask you guys, how many sharks do you think are killed by humans a year? What would your answer be? 45,000. Any advances on 45,000? Yeah. Half a million. Okay, so we're looking at 500,000. Well, I think 100 million sharks are killed a year by humans, guys. That equates to about three sharks every second are being killed by us. Uh, so you've really got to ask yourselves who are the mindless key machines? Is it the shark or is it us? Now, there is one main reason for this, and uh, that's what's in my hand, okay? This is a shark fin. Uh, a lot of people think this tastes really good in soup, uh, but it doesn't. A lot of people think this has a medicinal value, uh, but it doesn't. The only reason why shark fin soup has a flavor is because people add chicken or pork seasoning into it, okay? It absolutely is tainted. It's made out of cartilage, it's made as a skeleton. Uh, so it really has no flavour. Now you can still buy shark fin soup here in the UK and uh, places like Chinatown. You can still import these in in the country. Uh, I don't know why, but if you're against this, guys, um, you can sign the petition I've brought with me. I'll leave it on the chat as well, along with the shark fin. You can check out too. Um, now, sharks have been around for so long in our oceans, 420 million years. Uh, so they have embedded themselves within the ecosystem of the oceans. Uh, and the food changed so much. So if they go extinct, uh, and it's looking like they will do, uh, if we don't do something about it, it's not soon afterwards that we will go extinct as well and have a knock-on effect on every other species on the planet. But I don't want that to be the reason for you guys uh, to appreciate them and to help them out. I hope you have had some appreciation of just how amazing and beautiful these animals are. So why on earth would we want to kill uh, such amazing creatures? Uh, guys, if you do have any questions about them, or anything that you've seen here in the Ukraine so far, uh, please don't be shy or hesitant to come up and ask me anything you want. Uh, my name is Rose, I'm just sitting around for Bill World uh, And if you do want to have a little feel of the shark skin, the make the rock tooth, or the fin, and check out the petition, again, make your way over to the chat and you'll find them there. Uh, but I hope you've had a really good day so far, guys, in the aquarium. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day here with us. And I hope to see you and chat to you again very, very soon. Hi, I'm in the London Aquarium and these are beautiful clownfish. Here we go. Look. They're so cute. Eels. Eels are like often because it's like to me. You won't find dormy in there though. Like.